Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Novus Tech, and welcome back to my channel. And today we are going to be installing Linux into our PicoGo laptop two-in-one tablet thing. So let's get started. Now, a couple of months ago, I reviewed this unit and it was based off Windows. Now, they come pre-shipped with Windows and with this guy having 8 gigs of RAM with uh, Intel Atom 8350, it's it wasn't too bad. I mean, it was still sluggish, but it wasn't too bad because the eight gigs of RAM did help. Now, I did want to install Linux at that time, but I ran into quite a few issues when I was first initially installing Linux. Now, the screen rotation wasn't working, mouse wasn't working, sound card wasn't working. So after a couple of trial runs, I kind of left that on the back burner until now. So I had a little bit more time to play around with it. And actually, I didn't do as much work as I needed to because remember on this guy I was actually installing 2004 a couple of weeks ago and when I was reading the release notes they actually released a bunch of driver updates which involved the mouse drivers for this guy when I saw that I was like okay let's give this another go and it worked that was my main biggest concern was the mouse drivers wasn't working at that time when I was trying to get this unit to work so I couldn't do anything else i didn't want to push forward if i couldn't get the mouse to work anyway moving forward uh, we first do need to install 2004 or if you are planning to install like debian or pop os like i do have right now you do need to use the latest kernel which is 5.4 so google that and you'll probably be able to grab that kernel to install it into an older operating system but yes 2004 will have everything all set once you install that, it's going to be a little bit awkward because the screen rotation is still not correct. And this is where I was super excited about getting this to go. Once you're done installing it, let it boot into the freshly installed operating system. And I have a little trick where I turn the device kind of upside down and lock the screen rotation. And then I turn it back to wherever it's the keyboard is facing. So the screen rotation would be normal. Now I did that little trick just so I could type in my commands. And this is the little bit that I was excited about because I learned something new, which is IIO sensors. I've never done anything with this before. And when I was doing research on this screen a couple of months back, I know that GDP Win also had the same issue with the screen rotation. So I kind of just followed in their breadcrumbs and figured out how to do that as well. So the first thing we need to do is actually figure out what the device name is. We use this little command in terminal called udev adm space info dash n slash dev slash iio colon device zero. Once you hit enter, it'll print out your device name. And in our case, it's actually B O S C zero two zero zero. So now that we have that, we still need more stuff, which is the manufacturer and the product name. And to get that, we use DMI decode. So type in DMI decode, pipe that into a grep and type in the word manufacturer and you'll spit out the manufacturer. And in our case, it's actually Picago. And then the next one we need is product number. So we will use DMI decode space, pipe that into grep and then type in product and it'll actually print out product number. The product number is default string. Anyway, now that we got the three things that we need, we're going to have to create a new file in our lib slash udev slash hardware db d slash 61 dash sensor dash local dash hwdb. Once we create that file, it's going to be empty. Then we put this little string in there, which is sensor colon mod alias colon acpi colon our mod our device number, which is BOSO0200 star colon DMI colon star colon SVN, and then our manufacturer number, our manufacturer, which is Picago, then star, then colon, then PN, which is our product number, default string with no space, colon, then star. Once you're done with that first line, you hit enter and then hit space and then do capital Excel underscore mount underscore matrix equals. Now this first bit and the second bit and the third bit, it revolves around the screen itself. So the first one we need to modify is negative one or dash one comma zero comma zero semicolon zero comma one comma zero and then another semicolon zero comma zero comma one. Now the last two bits I did not change. I needed to change the first bit which has to do with the uh, up and down rotation. And once we're done with that, save the file and type sudo udev space 
hwdb space dash dash update and that would update the information that we just inputted as soon as you reboot it's going to boot into the correct orientation and that's basically it and this is what i learned brand new and uh, honestly with more and more devices coming out like this i'm glad that i learned this so when i do have another device that i'm testing with the screen rotation all off i know that i could follow this and learn how to do this now this will also be on my website a little write-up so you could just copy and paste whatever i just said versus having to you know type it out like the way i just did and uh, also the um, commands on how i got the manufacturer and the product number and also the device name so this is my current setup on my Pico with Pop! OS installed and I did update to the 5.4 kernel just to get the mouse working. So as you can see the mouse, it's kind of hard to see right now, but it is working and I'm able to click on stuff and tap to click does work as well. Loading like browsers and stuff like that in this setup, which is not using the GNOME default menu, works pretty good. Uh, audio is also working, so if you hit play, you could hear it working. Also all the shortcut keys does work as well so i'm able to raise and lower the volume as well as um dim and brighten the screen yeah so that works as well so does all the function keys so i don't have any problems with that um it looks pretty good um honestly i don't mind using this at all touch screen works as well so if i was to touch the start menu and all that stuff and if i was to open like say a browser or something like that uh, meanwhile i had the browser open the keyboard does come up, so you're able to use that. It detects that you're actually using touchscreen instead. And here's the menu. So if you take a look, if I go like this, you could kind of see a little tearing in the screen on the top right. And that's what I mean by X11. And Pop! OS uses X11 because they have an issue with using um, Wayland. So if you switch over to Wayland, it's actually a little bit better. And the lagginess, I mean, is like, say, if I, if I type in settings, so you see, it's not as fluid as I would expect it to be. But it still works with that. That's how I switched over to Arc Menu. It's just not as fluid using that menu system. Um, yeah, all the devices are working. SD card is also working. If you guys are wondering, I do have like a Raspberry Pi SD card in there. So you can see it says boot and root FS. If I go into boot, there's that, you know, all the little stuff for the Raspberry Pi information. But yeah, SD card is also working. And that is it. Moving forward, now that everything is all working, especially the screen rotation, on 20.04, everything else works. I didn't have to actually do anything other than do the screen rotation. The mouse works, keyboard works, Bluetooth, audio. Um, yeah, basically everything works. Uh, I do recommend using Wayland versus X11 because X11 had a little bit of a screen tearing. So Wayland was a lot smoother, also smoother in rotation uh, screen rotation on top of that uh, i did do a little thing you could google it yourself which is called gnome fractional scaling and it gives you this little command depending if you're using wayland or x11 and it'll enable fractional scaling for this little device and i usually use about 150 percent which is very ideal uh, 175 was a little bit too big for everything else but yeah 150 was a good um, percentage one thing I couldn't get working, which I know that there's a, some sort of GPIO trigger, is when you rotate the screen backwards to turn it into like a tablet mode, in Windows, it actually disables the keyboard. And in our Ubuntu install, it doesn't. The keyboard still is, you know, you could still click on the keyboard and stuff like that, so it doesn't disable that. Which is fine in my case, I guess, because I, I don't want to... I don't know where to even find or start to figure out where that is because I would have to create some sort of Python script and trigger, you know, when it sees that trigger, it'll disable it. And anyway, yeah, maybe some of you guys who are interested in doing that, uh, let me know if you are. I'll hit it down in the comments below if you are creating a Python script that will trigger that. Otherwise, uh, running GNOME is a little bit sluggish, especially when I have to refresh the screen for like a full menu start. Um, I did do my little hack here with my theming where I actually got like a little start menu going on, which is a little bit smoother. But I do recommend using XFCE4. It's a lot faster uh, Windows Manager than using GNOME itself. But no, I, I would definitely try anything you want, a budgie or... I don't know, KDE might be a really good experience on this. So far in tablet mode, I think I do really like the GNOME application menu where it fades up. Otherwise, 
I mean, it still takes up a lot of resources. Uh, it runs pretty smooth. I haven't had any issues with it right now. Um, and yeah, there is no scrolling for the mouse like I complained about in the first video. But like I said, it's a touch screen, so you could just scroll with your finger touching the screen. Otherwise, um, that is it. I um, hope you guys liked this video and that little bit of information. Uh, if you guys are planning to set this up on your own, uh, tweet it to me. I want to see what you guys are running as far as a setup on a small monitor like this. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.